Welcome to the Best Business Podcast. My mission is to help create 200 new multimillionaire business owners. How? You'll do better when you know better. In my interviews, you'll hear from self-made millionaires, seven-figure business owners, authors, and world-class experts sharing how they did it so you can too without experiencing the same obstacles they did. Now, if you like this interview, please share it with a friend you think will benefit. They'll appreciate it, and I will as well. You can also connect with me on social media. Look for Daryl Urbanski, D-A-R-Y-L, Urban Ski, U-R-B-A-N-S-K-I, and add me so we can be friends. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy what I've prepared for you right here, right now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always. And today we are joined by my friend, serial entrepreneur, and spoken word artist, Dmitry Kozlov. Dmitry's purpose is to accelerate the evolution of love through inspiring and empowering influencers. He does it with his latest venture, Influx, which builds epic personal brand sites for online influencers. His other primary ventures in- include Vision Tech Team, the tech team for visionaries, and Maverick Next, a network for exceptional young entrepreneurs. You may remember our first interview with him on the topic of the difference between six, seven, and eight-figure businesses. Well, today I've asked him to come back and talk about what we can do to have more influence and better brand recognition in our circles. So, Dimitri, always a pleasure to talk. I value and appreciate you so much, my friend. How are you doing? I am excellent. Really good to reconnect. You know, over the many years that we've known each other, it's always really good to have these touch points where we get to catch up and share what's going on in our worlds in a way that's valuable for uh, the people that are listening to to you and following what you're doing. So always an honor to be here. Thank you for bringing me in. Yeah, man. It's an honor and a pleasure. So uh, we're just talking a little bit about life, love, life and happiness and traveling and that and that it's important to kind of have balance in your world, or at least, I mean, <laughs> balance for an entrepreneur, so to speak. But that's important that you take care of the different areas of your life and and make sure that you're coming from a good place. One of the things that I love about your updated bio is that you're trying to help um, accelerate the evolution of love. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I love jump right into the purpose question. Absolutely. Um, I believe that we all as humans have ultimately a singular purpose, which is to give our greatest expression of love in the world. The way that we each do that is different and unique based on what our unique makeup path journey story is. And uh, what I found for myself was that my the way that I give love the most, and, and I phrased it as accelerate the evolution of love, being like bringing our culture, economy, uh, our world towards love and connection, and towards remembering that we're all made of love and that we're all meant to live as love, accelerating the evolution towards that world uh, faster. And I believe that most of us who have uh, awakened to that as a belief are on that same journey. And we all do that through our own unique ways in business, in art, in uh, whatever our unique expressions are in the world. Uh, For me personally, I found that that has been through inspiring influencers in that, like awakening them to their greatness and then empowering them, which is what we do with with our tools and the various companies and brands and that I have. So a lot of the artistry side of me is the inspiring, a lot of the business side is the empowering uh, entrepreneurs and other influencers to bring forth their dharma in the world. Mm, uh, mm, so- mm. And I love how you mentioned that. So I kind of want to dig deeper on this a little bit. So you say like, you want to inspire and empower influencers. So where, like you mentioned with the tools and the companies that you've got, but what is it typically that these influencers struggle with? Like what, how, how do they help you push forward the evolution of love? And what is it that they're getting tripped up with? Hmm. Yeah. So the, I, I, I believe all, uh, all people who self-identify as influencers or who step into that as a chosen identity for themselves, uh, whether that's entrepreneurs or they're podcasters like what you're doing here or uh, they're writers, uh, they're somehow out there giving a message to the world. They're typically doing that because they want to see a better world. So that's kind of how I encapsulate influencers mm-hmm. within the context of accelerating the evolution of love. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes there's more egoic reasons and, and whatever, but it's pretty easy to identify when somebody's doing something because that's, you know, a really genuine gift that they're giving to the world versus, uh, you know, mm-hmm. versus something that's more ego driven. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the, the context, the definition, as far as what they get, uh, stuck with ultimately it's anything and everything, uh, because all of us on this journey of life, when going to give our gifts to the world, 
have challenges that we run into. Uh, for the particular uh, gift that I felt that, that I've had to the world, at least as part of my journey at this stage, has been around supporting people with the very specific challenge of getting up really great sites, brands, funnels, everything along those lines so that they can, they can give their gifts and their expression more fully. That's mm -hmm. not to say that that's the only thing people get tripped up with and need empowerment around. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of other things, and there's plenty of other things for other people to solve for these light bringers, for these influencers in the world. My specific domain has been in the arena of the web world because I've been able to build a really great team that that solves this problem for people. Right, right, right. So even in the web world, you, like you said, like they get stuck, is it the tech stuff? I mean, that's how we first met. You were, for those that don't know Dimitri, like I, him and I met, we were working with a, a mutual client and he was kind of like the go-to guy that you wanted to work with if you were doing anything big and you wanted to be presentable and you wanted your stuff to work. You know, because a lot of these guys that we were dealing with at the time, they're kind of running and gunning. It's not necessarily like they're in a closet planning something for six months and perfecting it and then launching it. It's like, no, we launched it yesterday. Now we have to put it together and get it out there. You know, <laughs> we got to get it done. And Dimitri was the guy that could do that and help kind of bring uh, 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 method to the madness, so to speak, and kind of, you know, and help plan things out. And so where is it that people like, how has that changed in today's day and age? Or at least what are the parts that like, what does someone need? If someone's listening to this and they're like, I have an, or even me, I have a podcast and I already have assets up. But if I were to come to you or somebody else again was to say, Hey, I've got an audience and I've got a message. What is it that they need to, to, in order to help get their message out there in the world? Yeah, I'd say one of the most important things, and there's a lot, right? Everybody will sell you their particular approach in their system. So disclaimer is this is what I believe obviously, mm -hmm. and there's different approaches to doing this. And some people believe, hey, you don't really need branding, you don't need a personal site, and you don't need a corporate site, you just need a funnel and you know, drive traffic to that funnel. And that's one approach, and mm -hmm. I'm not dismissing that approach. Or other people say you just need a really good content engine and more of a blog, but it doesn't have to be about you and all of that. For, for me personally, part of the work that we do that I believe is really important is owning yourname.com, or some version of that, yourname.ca or yourname.net or yournameconsulting.com, depending on, on what's available, building a personal brand site around that, which includes you telling your story, giving your primary message, having your blog on there, building authority and credibility, and then doing so in a way that generates leads and results. And we've mm -hmm. done this for anybody from people that are just kind of out there getting started or people, people that already have like their more by getting started, I mean, they've got their gift to the world. They know what that is, mm -hmm. and they just haven't figured out how to get enough people to see them for that mm -hmm. um, or how to get enough clients. And uh, we've done it for those people, and we've done it for a lot of the top people, like our portfolios, like Frank Kern and JJ Virgin, Yannick Silver, David Bach, Dean Graziosi, all these major players. Mm -hmm. So we've done, we, we've taken what we've learned in building the brands and personal sites for all those major players and applied it to what we do for the mass world. Because all of those people, even though they have their funnels and their email sequences and all of these complex marketing assets that are vital to the way that they run their businesses, what they all ultimately have in common is that if you go to, if you Google their name and their sites come up, those sites are both, if, if we built them, hopefully, they're beautiful. <laughs> and uh, they're also driving results, as in mm -hmm. like driving leads into their funnel. They're building trust and credibility with their audience. They're doing. They're, they're built such that if a media person went there, they'd want to feature them. Versus, you know, if you ask yourself the question right now, listening to this, if you Googled your own name, what are the first results that come up, and is that something that makes somebody want to pay you a high ticket engagement for what it is that you do, or is that something that is screaming amateur? And right. that, that is oftentimes the difference between uh, somebody doing really well by building a business around their personal brand or somebody kind of like shying away from their personal brand. Right. And it's not about, you know, the important thing, people are like, oh, I don't want to build my personal brand because it's not about me and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not, it's, it's, you're right. It's not about you. And it's about you being the supporter and the guide to the people that you're out there helping. And mm -hmm. you just need something that's out there enough effective enough to get people to trust you and have the authority and credibility so that they trust you with uh, their investment, their choices, whatever it is that they're going to do in a way that, that they can engage with you right. versus you becoming the hero. Now, I want to also kind of ask about 
what are the things that you need to do a good job with that? Like if somebody comes to you and like you say, telling their story, their stuff, obviously I, I know because we've both, we've both done client, the client thing for a bit, some clients are better than others. Like what are some of the most successful clients? What do they already have in place? Or what are some of the key questions that they have to answer for themselves? Is it like an origin story? Is it like, do they already need to have some sort of media kit? Like what types of things really help you guys do what you do and, and also help your clients just get better results? Yeah. Yeah, I'll list a few things. First, I'll make a quick book recommendation, which is uh, if you do nothing else out of this podcast but get this book, it's Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Mm. Uh, incredible book that basically uh, uses the hero's journey to, to simplify a marketing message, but instead of making you the hero of the hero's journey, it's your customers the hero of the hero's journey, and you're simply their guide. Mm. And you, you're the Yoda to, to them being the Luke Skywalker. You don't want to mm. be mm. out there and be the best Jedi. <clears throat> You want to be the best Jedi trainer and your marketing materials just all need to communicate that. And, and this book helps you do that. So for somebody just out there getting like getting their messaging figured out or even to somebody that's out there in advance and has a ton of copy out there, this book simplifies that process. So I'll mm. say that as a foundation. And then to more fully answer your question, um, I would say our most successful clients, they've gotten clear on on their messaging and their avatar, like who they're serving. Mm. Um, and um, they, they do tell their story in a way that relates to those people versus just listing their accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, we actually have a really good guide for this. Uh, there's no opt in. You'll just get this for free. If you go to, um, influx.com slash storytelling, and we have all these storytelling secrets. It's a, it's a whole PDF that just guides you how to tell an, an effective origin story. Um, and, uh, and another good resource influx.com forward slash photos. Uh, it's a photography guide because a lot of clients that come to us, they they struggle with, OK, like I've got these two headshots. Right. And if you're going to hire a photographer to do your personal brand, you need guidance for that photographer for how this is going to be used. So we have a guide that that empowers people to do that on a site. And again, these are just mm. free resources that we send to our clients. And I, I love for people out there if they're doing their own sites or they're working with other web professionals to at least have the playbook, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. even if they don't have. You know, regardless of who they're working with, whether they're doing it themselves or having somebody else do it, have, having the resources to be able to do this stuff because uh, it can get it can be a pretty messy world. You know, mm -hmm. the web world is like you can hire anybody from three dollars an hour up to a hundred grand for essentially what seems to be the same thing. And it's a really confusing <clears throat> world out there and the playbook isn't published. Yeah, yeah. And not everybody knows what they're doing. People will promise you the moon and then they'll take you on a helicopter ride. And you're like, well, that's nice. That was a great helicopter ride, but I really wanted to be, you know, bouncing on the moon. And so, right. yeah, it helps if you can kind of, kind of feel it out before you get started. So very cool. Very, very cool. So again, that was I N F L U E X.com forward slash storytelling and forward slash photos. Yes. Perfect. 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 Okay, so that's some of the things that people need. And I guess what's the kind of current trend right now? Like, is there a suite of things that people need? Like, if someone's there, is there, how do people know that they've got like their brand? Is there a diagnosis we could walk people through right now? So I loved how you talked about having the story, uh, having like knowing who their avatar, who they serve. I think that's a really overly critical thing. In fact, there was a, Aaron Ross wrote a big, a great book. He, he also wrote Pre Predictable Revenue, which was a sales Bible of Silicon Valley. He's got a new book called um, <clears throat> From impossible to inevitable. And in it, the very first chapter talks about nailing your niche and that even companies that are doing a million a year, they, and they typically don't really know the niche that they're serving. And I, that blew my mind because I'm like, by a million dollars, you think you know your avatar, your niche. But they're like, no, not really. Not to the point that you can just <clears throat> like, and he was behind and involved with Salesforce and not really, not to the point that you know your customers so well, you can meet complete strangers and convert them you know, in a very short period of time because <clears throat> you know them and their life story and the pain that they're solving for them so well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think that's something that's really well, really overlooked. But what are the things that people have? What's the typical suite? Is it, is it a web? Is it like, I love you talked about kind of like some graphics, like, do you need social media profile? Do you need a blog? Do you have to have the website and the, the Facebook page and the Facebook group. I mean, what's kind of the, the, the current suite of tools, I guess is kind of what I'm asking yeah. that you need to have. Yeah. Great, great question. I'll, I'll list a few. And then I'll, the ultimate disclaimer here is that if you, if you just go out there and try to do everything that everybody else is doing, uh, mm -hmm. you're, or everything, everybody's selling you, uh, you'll just spend an infinite amount of time, money and energy building things without actually driving. Your mm -hmm. business. So mm -hmm. the key is like, okay, find the top, 
few and then really just double down and focus on what feels most relevant based on your strategy and based on your approach at this stage. Mm. Um, so I do believe that everybody needs a website. I'll go back to this point in a sec of what that website could entail, depending on what your business is. I do believe that everybody needs a Facebook fan page, mm. uh, primarily because whether you're doing Facebook ads now or not, at some point in your business, you very likely will be. It doesn't mean that right away you have to start doing a lot on your fan page, but it does mean that most likely when you start advertising, Facebook will very likely be the first place you start doing. So even if it's a couple dollars a day on retargeting some content. So I would say everybody needs uh, a website and everybody needs a Facebook fan page. Most other social media profiles are just, you just have to ask yourself, is it worth the effort and I'm going to do something with it? YouTube is great, especially if you're going to do video and especially if you're going to do a little bit of YouTube retargeting and driving video ads, mm. right? But mm -hmm. also not required. Right. Twitter, right, totally not required unless you're in a market where that's really relevant. Right. Um, and same thing with most other social media profiles. LinkedIn. LinkedIn can be amazing if you're doing the right things with it. Uh, I personally haven't updated my LinkedIn profile for like two yes, years. It's yes. <laughs> like probably really awkward. And I talk about personal branding a lot. So so maybe I need to get on that, but it hasn't had a detriment that I know of to my business yet. Okay. However, we do drive advertising on LinkedIn to recruit project managers for our company. Mm. So different platforms have their things. So the suite, I would say, is a website, Facebook page are the essentials. Everything else is kind of optional. Now, sure. I want to clarify the website piece because depending on where you're at, uh, this could be a totally different approach for people. Um, and there's a website and then there's a funnel. And if you go to ClickFunnels, you'll learn all about what a funnel is. And ClickFunnels is kind of like anti-website. I don't necessarily believe that either. I just think that if you, if you are building a website, your website shouldn't just be an informational storing house for your business or your brand. It should be something that guides somebody through a customer journey that, is, that, that, solve, that, that shows them how you can solve their problem. And whether that's a personal brand site for a coach, consultant, author, speaker, um, or an influencer of any kind, or it's an agency site, or it's an information product site, uh, it should follow ultimately a similar journey and a similar blueprint, which like telling somebody right away that you're there to solve their problem and the first immediate action they can take to engage with you on that level, either primary or transitional call to action, aka opt-in, right, sitting above the fold. And then, uh, and then I won't go into all the other components of this, uh, but essentially guiding somebody through the journey of getting them to trust you as their guide for their solution and not trying to feature, you know, seven different products on your home page, but featuring two opportunities. One is, you know, opt in to engage further, learn more, um, whatever that opt in might be. Usually it's something that's has really high free uh, value yeah. that will I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to build a relationship, not necessarily upsell them immediately on the other side. That's, that's an option, but ideally build a relationship. And two is, right, the primary call to action is usually whatever the main way to work with you is, which for most businesses, ultimately, it's just filling out an application or getting a consult going, and then your sales process takes over from there. If you've got a funnel, it drives you to the funnel. Mm. If you don't have a funnel, oftentimes it's just like, hey, like, let's get in touch. Here's what working with me looks like. And it starts with a 30 minute phone call. If that you, if you fit the criteria, do that here. And those two calls to action. And then the rest of your home page ultimately does a little bit of credibility building. I say a little bit because a few media logos and two or three testimonials do the trick. A wall of testimonials and talking about how incredible you are actually makes you the hero. And as Donald Miller says in, in StoryBrand, it's the person then goes, hey, this guy's another hero. And that's great. I celebrate him, but I'm busy looking for a guide. So I'm going to move on. So mm. enough credibility to get people to trust you, um, to take action. And then enough empathy, which is where you go into effective storytelling, right? To connect mm -hmm. with somebody mm -hmm. and getting them to, uh, to see that you're, you're, you've been on a journey that's similar to where they are and you've overcome that. And you now have a process that creates a solution for them. Mm. Um, so featuring these components with this intention 
on your site actually really simplifies the entire site, allows you to cut out a lot of clutter of things that you think you have to talk about, and really makes the site just a conversation around guiding somebody to know, like, and trust you to a point where they can engage with you on whatever level it makes most sense if you're actually there to solve that specific person's problem. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So can we iterate some of the mistakes people make when they're trying to do their branding and stuff? I feel like we did a really good job talking about what we want. What are some of the things that yep. we don't want? Yeah. Um, so if one of the things that we want, right, I'll, I'll, I'll give these three lenses and then I'll say how people screw them up. The three lenses are purpose, perception, personality. And I like cats, so I'm going to repeat this in a way that people remember. Purpose, perception, personality, right? Purpose, perception, personality are the three lenses, the three pillars of a perfect personal brand site. Um, number one thing being purpose, it's asking what's the primary purpose of your site? What do you want somebody to do? So we talked about that call to action. The biggest mistake people make in that is having 10 different things for people to do and not if you look at a page that you're creating and you don't understand what the primary action and purpose that you're trying to drive on that page is you're doing it wrong mm. which most sites yeah. including a lot of top brands out there that yeah. haven't like not necessarily top brands but let's say a lot of big companies out there mm -hmm. or major influencers out there really screw this up yeah right um, and the bigger they grow, the more information they start putting on their site and it just doesn't make sense. And as, as they clarify, all of a sudden their businesses grow, but they get simpler. Um, two is perception. And it's like asking, you know, what do you want people to feel and remember as they experience you? Um, and the, the, um, there's a really good Neil Patel article out there um, that says basically how spending $162,000 on clothes, maybe $692 thousand dollars and it's all about how he started walking into uh meetings after spending like six figures on clothes and doing nothing else different but in those high-end clothes he started making a lot more money um on closing the deals right because uh, he had more confidence and yeah, yeah i think i read one it was something about driving a lamborghini or something like that too i think yeah 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 he has that in there about how his buddy started showing up to meetings in a lamborghini and a lot of us out there especially like the you know the really authentic like love-based entrepreneurs we don't like to think that perception matters but it makes a huge difference in mm -hmm. in how people spend and it doesn't mean being inauthentic but it means being intentional about what experience you're giving people on your site so this is where investing in design and branding in good photography in good copy and being intentional about your brand actually makes a difference in how much money people spend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Even mm -hmm. if let's say one thing may convert just as good and it's based on the copy, right? Yeah. The amount of money that customer may spend with you based on how much they value and trust your brand, uh, especially if you're in more of a like one-on-one -on -one or consulting or service-based business um, is significantly influenced by their perception of your level of professionalism, which is impacted by your branding. Right. Um, and, and so the big mistake people make is just actually screwing that up and not caring and thinking branding doesn't matter. Or they think because, you know, like Frank Kern is a great example of ours that uh, for him, high end branding doesn't matter. Mm. Literally, we tried all the high end branding stuff for him and his ugly pages have always converted better. <laughs> but, and, then, uh, the, and we have a beautiful site for him, but the, the, um, the mistake people make is looking at Frank and saying and thinking that applies for them. For them Actually, right. Frank's brand, Frank's intentional brand is like, I won't call it like ugly internet marketing, but it is white page, black text, nothing else really yep. going on. And he's intentional about like, that's just the brand that works for him. That doesn't mean that's the brand that works for everybody. And the, and the other part that's there is that he's, it's, he's already so well known. That's something that plays a big factor into it too. I mean, if you don't know someone, if this is your first time, your car's not been working well, like, you know, you get a flat tire or something and you pull over and you just go to the first mechanic shop you see, you have nothing but their image to judge them on. And so that's right. where some of the stuff comes into play where if people don't know you, never heard of you and now they're coming and they're determining just trying to decide whether they're going to do business with you or not that's kind of where some of the stuff plays a major role right the people that know like and trust you they're not going to judge you because you didn't get your hair cut right they're not right. going to care about that but if someone's never met you before they're going to look at you and you know if you're going to see 
a mechanic and somebody comes out of the of the garage, like when you see a mechanic, you want them covered in grease, right? You want them to look like they live under a car. If they come out and they're in like a nice fancy, you know, like like suit, thousand dollar suit, you'd be a little concerned. Like, am I in the right spot? Are you a mechanic? Like, what do you? Why are you so clean and why are you so polished? Like, you know, who who's right. the one? Yeah. You know, so that's that's kind of just to speak to what you're talking about here, I think, and just to help people understand. Like for Frank, he doesn't necessarily need that because it's more about all right, Frank. Yeah. What do you got? for me because i've known you for years already yeah and, you know? and even to his new customers it's like it's just for him it's like it's kind of like that's his brand that works but even to flip that based on the exact clothing example you just gave is great because frank actually used to be the surfer guy with long hair and that used to be his stage image yeah. and now he's a guy in a suit with slick yeah. back hair yeah and why because even even though his online brand had like his not his online brand but even though his like sites don't need a, a super high-end branding they just need something clean his personality yeah. actually uh, has upgraded in terms of its brand to appeal to a higher level uh, consulting audience. Mm -hmm. Kind of brings me to my, my third pillar of personality, which is really asking like, is your site an authentic expression of who you are? Which like the mistake people make there is trying to buy, buy people trying to copy the science and the formula. They also think they should copy the art mm. of what somebody else's expression is. And like two of our sites that, when when I present some of this stuff at events, I love to actually go to frankkern.com and go to yannicksilver.com and I show how these two sites follow the same exact formula and they're radically different, mm. right? They're radically different. And each of them is an authentic expression of who Frank is and who Yannick is. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will think that because X person in this industry Right, because Mike Dillard's site looks a certain way, my site should look a certain way, mm -hmm. which is not true. But because Mike Dillard has an option above the fold and has good copy and has his bio in a certain place and all of that, that's great stuff to, to copy. Mm -hmm. Right. But what Mike's brand is is Mike. What Frank's brand is is Frank. What Yannick's brand is is Yannick. So it's how can you add your own unique personality while still following a formula that works? And mm -hmm. the biggest mistake people make is that in copying the formula, they also think that they have to copy oh, the yeah. personality, which never works. Mm -hmm. The personality but it only works to the extent that it's fully transparent and authentic and your authentic expression of who you are translated online. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, how does this apply to like a brand that's not uh, like a, a a personal brand? If it's like a company or a product or a membership of some sort, how does it what what are the transferable parts of this? Right. This is this is great because if you look at even the physical products world, right? Like Apple is such a well-known brand, and there's a very specific way you expect Apple packaging, Apple.com, any Apple site, any marketing material to look. Um, that's very different from uh, another uh, technology brand in their industry. Um, and similar thing with information marketing in many ways. And I think if we look at the, uh, this is great because we can translate um, uh, some of these examples in the information marketing space, right? Like if we look at uh, Digital Marketer as a really great top brand example that uh, Ryan Dice, his personal brand is really tied into Digital Marketer. Uh, but Digital Marketer has its own brand. And actually all of Digital Marketer stuff now looks beautiful. And they used to just have hey, here's a video sales letter with a headline on top and a white page and nothing else and a button that appears after 27 and a half minutes that, of watching the video, right? That's no longer how they do business. They have beautiful looking sales pages. They have their gears typically in the background. They have, they're of a brand that's very intentionally designed that if you've seen their stuff before and you go to trafficandconversionsummit.com or if you go to any other digital marketer site, you're kind of familiar that this is part of that larger brand and there's a trust associated with that and there's connection. Versus again, if we go back to Frank's stuff, even outside of his personal brand, his products, you're seeing you know, a blank white page with a black or red headline and a video and pretty much nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, and each of those is uh, an authentic expression of what you can expect in terms of experiencing each product and it doesn't make one better or worse, Just but it, what it does is makes them different experiences that are authentic and affects people's perception. And obviously both of those, uh, the, the primary purpose piece, this applies to everything, right? right? The, the what do you want people to do 
it doesn't matter whether you have a, a product site, an info site, a blog, right? This applies even if you don't have a call to action in terms of getting people to buy, but you just want people to look through a certain amount of information that applies. Mm. Um, you know, on facebook.com, what's the primary purpose of that, of the homepage? to get somebody to scroll down the freaking newsfeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a million things going on on that page, but what somebody, what does somebody do as soon as you go to facebook.com? I happen to have newsfeed eradicator to not do this because, it's just, <laughs> because the, the, the sign is actually stronger than my willpower. I know if I go to facebook.com and I have a newsfeed, I'm going to scroll down it right. because the, the entire thing is designed around that primary purpose, even if there's other things I could do on the site, right? So that just, it applies no matter what kind of site you have. And there's nothing that's too complicated. There's nothing that, oh, I've, this stuff is different. I've got an e-commerce site with, you know, 700 product SKUs and this doesn't apply to me. It, it always applies because it's about human behavior and what you're trying to get somebody to do. And then perception, how, they, how you want them to feel and experience and remember you. And then personality is like, wh what is the unique expression, whether it's of your personal brand or of your product or of your membership experience or of whatever it is, because people can fall in love with brands that mm -hmm. don't have personalities attached to them. And anything from Apple to Harley Davidson uh, to, um, um, to uh, I'm blanking on the, on the whiskey right now. Um, oh, Jack but Daniels. Like this, yes, yeah, to Jack Daniels too. Like a, a lot of product brands in all sorts of categories have entire associations with the personalities of what those brands are. So, right. You can be really intentional about this and just important to be really authentic and know that this does make a difference, especially if you're building a long term business. Mm, mm, mm. I think that's <laughs> I think that's really powerful and really important, especially in today's day and age and in today's world. Um, just again, to give people confidence, because so many businesses now need an online presence, but it's so easy for someone to just throw up a pretty website too and not, and you know, and not necessarily be able to back it up. So I think it's important that you don't want to be left behind and beaten by someone who doesn't have the goods when you have the goods simply because you didn't present yourself properly. And so that's, I think an important part of it. Now, what do you see is kind of the future of where these brand sites and personal branding is going? Is there a certain direction things are going in? Is like everyone getting the, you know, the, the official, whatever that is, the, the, the Twitter check mark. Like, is this all, like, is there somewhere that you see a lot of the stuff heading towards? Everybody's doing this now. That was something that Google did back in the day. You'd have to, I forget what it was, but you were like Google authorship or something, you know, to right. like, is it, where's the future of some of this stuff? Where do you see it headed? Yeah, I'll answer that way in less of a tactical way and more of a big picture way, sure. because I, I think people make tactical predictions all the time. And I think we can sort of, sort of know for up to like 90 days or six months and beyond that, we're just throwing really wild guesses into what thing is going to be relevant, whether it's what platform or what feature on what platform and all of that. Um, and I try not to play that game too much. I, I have I have people on my team I play that game well so that we can always be innovating and ahead of the trends versus trying to catch up to them. Um, but on a big picture, what I do know is that trust as its own currency will continue to grow in its role in people's buying decisions. Transparency mm. will continue to be more and more important. Uh, people doing people are doing people doing business with people versus just giant brands or people mm -hmm. having a relationship with brands versus just direct marketing that says, I will solve your problem in this way. But then the company actually has a terrible BBB rating and tries to hide their brand and all of that by just trying to get people into a short term funnel. I think like, like that, that world is shifting to a point where a lot, and, and it's not just shifting. I think it's just everything is organically coming towards more truth and more love which means more authenticity. Um, so there will always be some loopholes mm -hmm. and those loopholes will get shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. And what matter, what, what will continue to matter more and more is the currency of trust that a brand or a person is able to build with their audience by going out there and authentically bringing their gifts to the world, whether it's through their marketing message and their content or directly through their products and services, ideally both in congruence with each other. And that's the trend that I want to both be a part of perpetuating um, and support people with in their own industries. And there's can, tons of examples of this. Can you, what do you mean by transparency? 
that part is the only thing I, I was with you for everything. But when you said that also more transparency, what, what kind of transparency am I trying to articulate or express? Yeah. Really great question. Um, let, let, let's, I'll use the personal branding context. It's who's behind the thing, mm. right? Um, it, in, you know, it, it's, uh, when let's say Fra Frank is again, I'll just keep using Frank as an example. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure if he was listening to this, he'd be like, you don't totally have my theories. Right. But <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, like from my perspective, it's, you know, there was a time when Frank could advertise to a particular product, let's say, let's call it one of his older ones, which was mass control. And people wanted that. And yes, they associated Frank with a reliable person that they could trust to teach them stuff. Um, and that, uh, but people bought because of the direct response effectiveness of right. that particular product, right? I think we're going towards, a, without having to Google Frank and see what comes up for Frank. Or if they did Google him, you know, it's like that may affect buying decisions. But now, basically, Frank's entire brand Oh, Frank's entire business is is much more dependent than it's ever been, and going more and more towards that on his personal brand. Not to say that his personal brand site drives all his leads; it certainly doesn't. Mm -hmm. But because his entire business is built now around a community, which is his inner circle program, so he gives people his products as part of his monthly program. Mm -hmm. More people are deciding to: Is this the guy that I want to align with, mm -hmm. and what's he really about? Mm -hmm. And there's there's a little bit more research into who's behind the curtain of this thing versus just the guru industry, which the, the guru industry, the world of gurus, online gurus is um, at least has been in the past inherently not fully transparent mm -hmm. because there's a, there's an image of somebody doing everything perfectly and I need to go follow in their footsteps. Right. And no, from being behind the scenes of those people's lives and businesses, yeah. and every <laughs> has their challenges and their struggles on their own levels and they're teaching that doesn't mean that what they're teaching isn't authentic but um they're teaching from a place of they have their own challenges and they're helping a particular audience with a particular thing because that's their gift to give um and i think heading towards more and more transparency part of that is pulling back the veil behind i'm not i'm not just out there as a guru but here's who I authentically am. And here's why I can help you on your journey. Um, and here's also like what my journey has been. And I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that, fine, but instead, instead celebrating it. Yeah. I think that's really important that admitting you're not perfect and admitting your flaws simply so people can relate to you better. And like you say, build that relationship. Drayton Bird, who we also, I guess on our show, he also had a number one best-selling marketing book in the UK for like 30 years. Uh, there's a great quote in his book that says, you know, the purpose of business is to locate a prospect turn that prospect into a customer and then make that customer your friend. And in that he's implying that it's about the long-term really, you know, it's really hard to build a sustainable long-term business. That's going to feed you be an asset. You can sell to people if you're just churning and burning customers. And so you have to be able to have, be relatable. You can't be like Zeus on Mount Olympus. You know what I mean? Like people have to be able to reach out and touch you and understand and appreciate that you're not perfect as well. And some people you might lose business out of it <clears throat> because you, you know, because you share some personal insights or, you know, just realities. But then the people that are with you, they will be that following, you know what I mean? Like there'll be that community that accepts you despite of any of those shortcomings. And it's not like some things maybe you should or shouldn't confess publicly. Like we'll just put that out there, but I mean, just be real. I think that's kind of what you're trying to say. Um, or what I'm yes. trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Just be real and acknowledge that the, your flaws. And that's even something when you talk about copy on a page, <clears throat> being able to say what you're not good at and who you're not for can actually make the people that you that that need the thing you are good at and the people you are for more attracted to you because you obviously whenever you talk to a professional they will have boundaries like i i actually stopped working with some clients about a month ago now because they didn't operate in a way that i felt i could be successful and get them the results they wanted and they refused to follow my guidance and it's like if i'm supposed to come in here <clears throat> if i'm supposed if you're you know making me responsible for these results then i need to be able to control you know, like I have to be able to do it in my terms. I'm not going to be able to score goals if you're going to tell me how to shoot and how to pass and how to do all this other stuff. And anybody that's good at it, like if you have a carpenter that comes in, you tell them that you want a wooden staircase upstairs, but 
the whole area that you're in is like known for being just absolutely terrible with termites. And he's like, okay, but we got to do this, this, this first to like termite proof your house. If you won't do that, they won't do business with, you know what I mean? Like they're, they know how to disqualify people and that's something you should be okay doing too. Hey, look, we do deal great with people that do this, 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 we're not so good at this, you know, or we've had trouble with these. We're not comfortable with that. It's a really powerful way to be able to, to resonate and, and hone in on what you want. And it just, it's expressing what you're good at. I think, you know, like, I think that's, again, that transparency in a different manner. It's just, ex it's explaining what you're for. We help these people with this problem. We don't do this. We don't do that. But so many people in business are like, we do everything. And if you need it and we don't do it, we'll find someone who does, you know, and that's yeah. just, nobody wants that. Everybody wants specialized professionals that are, you know, specifically have a ton of experience in what they want done. Right. So. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so now what do you see is, I guess, are there any habits that you feel you see some of your most successful clients uh, having? Yes. It's uh, especially because our clients are, are typically like most people I've worked with, they're, they're playing at a really high level. And the people that I've seen struggle most at that, that play at that high level is people who get complacent because of their past success and think that past mm -hmm. success success will roll into future success. Mm -hmm. And the people that I've seen as most successful in that just always keep a beginner's mind and stay humble. Doesn't matter what they've done in revenue in the past. Doesn't matter what their reputation is. Doesn't matter what their list size is, um, what's worked so far. They continue to innovate. They stay humble. They continue to innovate. They continue to do their best to stay ahead of the market. And they continue to do their best to contribute uh, versus just like riding on the coattails of their own past success or, or of previous results. They don't just assume that, you know, that uh, because they've done X, Y, Z launch or successful thing, you know, they've got a certain reputation that that defines their future pro projects as, as successful or mm -hmm. that defines them as successful. It becomes not about them. It becomes how am I showing up every day to this work? Mm -hmm. um, and I've really, I, I've seen that, uh, um, uh, really behind the scenes of a lot of the people we've worked with, which is, which is really, really cool. Like I, first time we sat in Frank's office, uh, it was also really cool. Cause it was like, uh, he works a lot and he loves what he does. Mm -hmm. It was like building Legos is building, building infusion stuff campaigns, <laughs> um, that, 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 that sell stuff effectively. Right. It's like, and, and a lot of our clients, similar thing. It's, uh, it's, they love what they do and they keep working at it. The rest of the world may think, oh, they've got a lifestyle business and they don't do much. No, they work a lot. They just, uh, their work to them is, like we talked right. about at the very beginning of this, it's their, it's their purpose, it's their love, it's their thing that they're giving, whether they label it as purpose and love and expanding consciousness and all of that or not, it's what they're here to do and they're here to give. Um, and they're not, you know, they're, they're continuously doing that as long as they feel that they're meant to do it. And there's mm -hmm. not some ego trip up around, oh, I no longer have to do do the work or pay the dues because now I'm at a certain level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that speaks again to like, actually just recently had a talk with someone about this, that when you get good at something, you, you love it. Like You look at some of the greatest basketball players or pick any any profession, you know, even when they've quote unquote retired, they're still involved because they have a love for it. You know, like they're never going to fully walk away from that thing because there's a love that one of my favorite quotes about mastery is do it until it becomes dull and then do it until it's beautiful again. And that just speaks mm. to like getting into the the nuances like, you know, this is what I'm about. I might live for this. I mean, when uh, people forget, like you talk about people resting on their laurels, that's what happened to newspapers and why they got decimated. They had a great position, made a ton of money and, it, you know, and, and they forgot what they were doing. They forgot that the 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 problem that they solved for the world. They forgot about that and they got comfortable and then they got decimated by the internet and blogs and people that did it better than them. But if you talk about like Frank, how he just loves the marketing and the campaigns and the psychology and helping communicate to people how to get through and overcome those obstacles and even overcome themselves if they're afraid to spend the money or move forward. Like that's a powerful thing. And that's something where you have to be about a life. And if you're about the life of doing nothing, I should say you should be about the life of producing something. Producing generates money, consuming costs money. When I eat food, it costs me money. When I watch a movie or I go see something, you know, I consume, right? It costs me money. But if I produce things, it gives me an opportunity to make money because I'm producing something for someone else. You have to fall in love with something you produce for the world. What is something you want to give? 
to the world. Everything is giving. Plants are giving fruit and flowers are giving nectar. You know, everyone's producing something to, to, for the benefit of someone else. And if you just become good at it, uh, you know, you, you'll get close to mastering it. And I think, again, when it talks about that personal brand and your purpose and understanding who you are and your identity, I think that needs to be expressed in your brand as well. Now, is there anything that has to be done? You talked about having a site and having the, the site has to have a purpose and you have to have your story. Are there things like, I guess you mentioned that you need a, a website and a Facebook page, if only just to do ads. Is, is Do you think that for a personal brand, you have to be producing a lot of content? You did kind of say at the beginning, it depends on who or what your market wants, but. Yeah, it, content really depends. It, it depends on your strategy. I don't think you have to produce a lot of content. I, I do think sometimes producing a lot of content is extremely valuable because you can always give people new stuff and, and new value. I think the focus should always be on what is the most valuable way that I can contribute to my audience to solve their problems uh, while supporting what my business objectives are and in a way that's congruent and authentic to me. Hmm. So versus looking at, oh, should I be publishing once a week or twice a week or once a month or whatever, it, like frequency and 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 uh, length and all of these other things, they're tactical factors that you can only solve once you figure out what, like how it is that you want to show mm -hmm. up in a way that best supports your audience and your business. Mm -hmm. So for example, there are, um, like one of our clients, Sachet Gupta, um, is he he uh, he has a blog, um, and on his blog, it's just it's a library of three articles that don't have dates on them that solve specific problems for his audiences. And one of them is the ultimate guide to sponsorships and uh, sponsorships for podcasts, basically how to make more money. And then another one is a, a called podcast, how to get paid. And another one is uh, a webinar for the intro to Facebook ads. And I think also mm. for podcasters. And he solves three very specific problems for anybody that's running a podcast with those three articles. They're long copy articles. He never publishes new content. Mm. Almost never. But those three articles get shared and those three articles solve a problem. And the whole podcasting community is more likely to share those with each other. And those are three pieces of content that he wrote once that sit on his quote unquote blog, which is really just a library of resources um, that continue to drive new traffic for him. And if those dry up or he has a new problem to solve, he'll publish something new. Others, just as effectively, right, Gary Vaynerchuk is the daily video, right? Like people just always want to hear Gary doing new stuff, even if he's not solving a problem at all in his five to 10 minutes of uh, like passionate talking about something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But people, people, people get fed by that, right? And it's, it's a whole range, right? You could publish three things a year and have that work just as effectively as publishing daily, but it's, it's what works for you. I think frequency, relevancy, omnipresence, all of these things matter a lot but it's just figuring out what your unique path around that is that works for your business and that, that best aligns for how to serve your audience. Mm, mm, mm. I think that's really well said. And I kind of feel like that's the only the last thing that I was thinking of to ask. You've answered a ton of fantastic questions in this interview on what we need to be aware of, how to build a brand, what sort of materials we need to have prepared. You gave away some free resources to help anyone that doesn't have those in place yet. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? Hmm. I, I think I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll answer for, you know, when it comes to the website stuff at what stage people should be using what resources for this kind of stuff so that they can get something actionable out of this. Um, because if you're just a startup, right. Or you're just starting out, it, you have probably a different decision than if you're a $2 million company or anywhere in between trying to solve this particular problem. So if you're literally, if you've got no budget or if you've got, you know, a $10,000 budget for your business and you're getting started, don't invest 10 grand in a website. It just doesn't make sense. You know, invest a few hundred bucks into getting a click funnels or lead pages set up or a WordPress with a basic theme. Apply some of the principles we talked about today and get your lead capture up with a MailChimp account, something like that. Like get a basic site up that follows a lot of these principles and then invest your money in advertising, content, whatever, wherever it is the next best place to uh, to put your money, not in web development. However, if you're, you know, if you're a, a lower six-figure business, either hire the right agency, whether that's us or that's somebody else that you've severely evaluated by these same factors to ensure that they do the right work, 
or hire a freelancer, but don't try to do it yourself because it doesn't make sense at that point. Your time is better spent doing other things. Mm. Or if you're a multiple, you know, if you're a seven figure plus company, then really invest in an agency because you're seven figures, you want to grow. If you're spending less than $10,000 on your web presence, which is really the center of your online universe, and you're really not honoring one of the most important assets of your mm. business. And it's crazy to try to, at that point, negotiate with a web designer. I, I got this for two grand. I got this for five grand or whatever. Like spend the money because, and both on a website and copy, and if you're personal brand photography and branding, all of that stuff makes a big difference because you're investing in the long-term asset that becomes the center of your online universe. But again, it's a two and a half million dollar company or a million dollar business or a multiple six-figure consulting business doesn't have to make the same decision as a startup just getting this rolling. And oftentimes people confuse those two. Right. So that's that that's the, the last question I'll answer is like looking at all of this stuff can be applied no matter where you're at, just through different mediums. Right, right, right. And it's all and it's all um, transferable. It transcends all levels. No matter whether you're beginning in the middle or the end, it is something you need to be aware of. It's probably something you need to revisit maybe quarterly or at least semi-annually to be like, are we off track? Are we keeping congruent with our messaging? You know, are we, are we showing, are we kind of Frankenstein? Do we show up like this over here and that over there? Do we show up differently in different places, you know, or do we have a unified whole? So I think that's really powerful. Dimitri, you've always got such great insight. It's always a breath of fresh air to speak with you. I really value and appreciate our time and our friendship. And thank you for coming and sharing with my audience. And just taking some time out of your day. Obviously, you've got your own followers, your own clients, your own your girlfriend, your own people to be taken care of. So I just really appreciate you taking the time to connect and share with me and mine. Yeah, absolutely. Been a real pleasure, Daryl, and looking forward to the next one. You've reached the end of our interview. Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you. So look, I was privileged enough to sit in the room the other day and uh, listen to, to Daryl present. I had the great fortune to spend some time with Daryl Obrinsky during this week. And we had an incredible two and a half hour presentation with Daryl. Daryl is, is amazing. I got so many little nuggets of wisdom. I hadn't heard Daryl speak before, um, but what, what struck me from his presentation was he is one of these hidden masters in the internet marketing world who has worked on some pretty incredible launches. Daryl has a ridiculous amount of knowledge. Daryl Obanski's presentation was absolutely great. I really loved an incredible knowledge of numbers. He is a very articulate, very knowledgeable, very advanced uh, marketer. Well, he talked a lot about um, yeah, keyword tools and how to research your niche. So it really created a lot of predictability around moving forwards in our business with the marketing and sales aspect, which is so important to any business to really see it grow. Where he walks you through step by step how to judge in detailed form how much money you could potentially make from a market based on AdWords, keyword research, and putting together quite complex uh, Excel spreadsheets. 
it. And what I took away from it is not only understanding your niche market, but also looking at and breaking down and going, am I working with the right niche? Is there enough demand there for me to be able to reach my goals? And doing that hard research. There's a lot of gurus out there um, that present you a lot of the why and the what, but they don't necessarily give you the how. And, and what I really found with Daryl's presentation, there's no holding back. There was no holding back the screens of the curtains, like everything was given to, to really assist us. His feasibility and due diligence is, is incredible. And he was able to show us in a really short space of time how to cut through the overwhelm. You're giving us the, the exact tools that we can use to test something before we, before we even go to start testing it by spending money on it. One of the biggest nuggets that I got out of his presentation was that when people pay, they pay attention, and when people pay a lot, they pay a lot of attention. I just love that. I think that's a great way to look at how to price yourself. And he was a great speaker, lots of energy, and it was, it was really great to spend time with him. Honestly, phenomenal presentation. I would love to catch up with him, you know, next time I'm in this part of the world.